Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Glenn Adams, chairman of the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, and I tell you, you couldn't get a, a, a better, prettier day. Uh, I remember um, retired uh, District Court Judge uh, Ed Pone would always tell me that Gray's Creek is God's country. Uh, he would tell you that each and every day, and, and, and uh, we believe that. Uh, but today is just a, a monumental day in the history of Cumberland County. And so uh, just to give you an idea of how we're going to proceed, uh, I'm going to give some opening remarks. We'll hear from uh, Mr. Don Porter, who's the chair of the Federal Public Works Commission, Dr. Jennifer Green, who is uh, the Cumberland County Public Health Director, uh, Dr. Tony Stewart, the Vice Chairwoman of the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, uh, Mr. Clarence Greer, who is the uh, Cumberland County uh, Manager, and Mr. Tim Bryant, who is the CEO and General Manager of the Federal Works Commission. Uh, let me take this opportunity just to uh, recognize we do have some member of our local delegations. If you would just raise your hand, I uh, appreciate you. I have uh, County Commissioner Jimmy Keith, uh, one of our county commissioners here. Uh, I think I saw uh, Ms. Deanna from the, uh, the chair of the uh, Cumberland County uh, Board of Education. I think I saw, uh, is he over there? Yeah. Uh, also, Greg West, uh, who's with the Cumberland County Board of Education. So thank you all uh, for being here. You know, sometimes I'm chair, sometimes I'm not. I can't figure out whether I was chair when this first came out. But we first became aware of wide, uh, widespread Gen X contamination in portions of our county in uh, 2017. Since that time, though, we have learned more about the extent, uh, extent of the impacts of this contamination has had on our residents, their health, and their quality of life. While this problem was not created by the county, the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners has been committed since the beginning to addressing this issue for our citizens who deserve access to regulated, reliable, safe, clean drinking water. It is a health concern for all of Cumberland County. But it takes time to address issues of this magnitude. There have been many factors to consider when determining and implementing the best solutions to address this desperate need in our community. Through it all, the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners has continued to listen to the concerns of our residents, and we have not once wavered from our commitment to seeing this through for the benefit of our residents. The time it has taken to get to this point, we are here today, we are concerned by the Board of Commissioners. We took action by suing Camores and DuPont. Litigation is pending, but we will know that it takes time to play out in court. So we therefore have been proactive in seeking a solution for our citizens. The county has plans to build out a system. We did that when our uh, last county manager, Ms. Uh, Amy Cannon was here, we built out a system. We've looked at the possibility of deep water wells, but today we are talking about Grays, Grays Creek. But make sure that this health concern is beyond Grace Creek. This is just the first step. It's in Cedar Creek. It's headed up to Stedman, but it's a step-by-step -step process that we have to take care of this issue. So I got to thank our county manager, Clarence Greer and, PE and PWC CEO, Tim Bryant for being very proactive in this. But I would be remiss not to thank our former county manager, Amy Cannon, for all the hard work and effort she put in to bring us to this point. You know, many of you were with us on Wednesday when the Secretary of EPA, Michael Regan, along with Governor Roy Cooper and Attorney Ge uh, General Josh Stein uh, were here. Wednesday was a good day for the entire nation as Senator Regan, Secretary Regan announced new standards for PFAS, Gen X, and Forever Chemicals. That was a good day. But today is a great day. And so today I am proud to stand before you to announce that the Cumberland County is partnering with the Federal Public Works Commission to bring safe drinking water to Grays Creek Water and Sewer District. As part of this collaboration, PWC will expand its current water system to provide source water and service not only to Grays Creek and the Altman Road Elementary Schools, but to the entire Grays Creek Sewer and Water District. You all ought to clap for that. That is monumental today. We believe this collaboration is in the best interest of county residents 
and that by combining our resources, we'd be able to do this far more quickly than we could do it individually. We are truly embodying the meaning of our county motto, together we can. Well, I want to express appreciation for PwC for being willing to partner with the county for the benefit of our residents who urgently reliable and safe drinking water. I also want to thank the members of our state legislature delegation led by uh, Mr. Marvin Lucas, uh, who've advocated for Cumberland County and for this effort. The delegation has provided a substantial amount of funds totaling $12 million toward making this need a reality. Well, and, yeah. All right. and, and then uh, we would also, uh, as I uh, continue to do this, Representative Frances Jackson, we talk every day and uh, thank her for uh, all of her efforts. In closing today, today marks a significant milestone as we advance action on the majority, a major priority of the Cumberland County Commissioners and of Cumberland County. But this is only the beginning. In the coming months, we will share more information and engage our residents that they have the information they need about what this means to them and how to participate. We've entered into uh, uh, an agreement with a uh, uh, memorandum of understanding uh, with PwC and uh, Mr. Don Porter and his commissioners to be able to do this. And what we will do is after everyone speak, I will come back and we'll have a question and answer so you can ask those questions. Uh, but let me introduce now Mr. Don Porter, uh, chair of the Fabula Public Works Commission. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Stand as a power out, and if, if it is, you want to blame somebody, blame me. Somebody must have paid the bill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two, clean water elements in one week. That's right. That deserves a clap. Based on my experience, whether as a 30-year logistician or a 20-year economic developer, I well know the importance of infrastructure when it comes to providing high quality for communities. And I'm simply here today to report and to make it clear that uh, my fellow commissioners Commissioner Davis, who is here, raise your hand there, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Richard King, uh, Commissioner Ronald Garrett could not be here. But let me be perfectly clear, we are honored and proud to partner with uh, uh, our PwC staff and the county in, this, in forming this partnership. This is a great effort. And when I say a great effort, I mean a great effort. The citizens of Grace Creek deserve to have access to clean water. And I'm simply proud to be the chair of a board that has partnered with our county to make that happen. So the one thing that I want to reiterate is that our board is committed to partnering and let it be known that together we can get the job done. But let there be no doubt that together we will get the job done. Thank you so much for having me here today. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. In public health, we know that safe drinking water is essential to ensuring the health of the public and the health of our community and the health of our citizens. Across the country, the quality of our water and the safety of our drinking water remains a public health issue, even in 2024. We can improve these public health outcomes and our health outcomes of our community by doing a few things. One is to make sure that we reduce the uh, negative impacts of uh, poor water quality in our communities. 
we know that drinking contaminated water um, can um, impact our health outcomes. We can improve our health outcomes by drinking water by drinking water regulations and investments in our public health water infrastructure. So today's announcement of this partnership between the Cumberland County Board of County Commissioners and the Public Work Commission to bring safe drinking water to the Grays Creek Water and Sewer District is a really critical step to advancing the health of our, of our citizens in Cumberland County and specifically in Grays Creek. This partnership will bring a water supply that's permanent, regulated, and safe to address the presence of Gen X and private water drinking wells. Importantly, this this program and this project uh, and this partnership supplies water to our most vulnerable citizens, as Commissioner Adams mentioned, um, at our elementary school students here at Grace Creek Elementary and at Alderman Road Elementary Schools. It aligns with the EPA's announcement on Wednesday about uh, limits on uh, these forever chemicals that are uh, present in our water. That is a historic day for our country and our community to make sure that we are advancing the health and safety of our citizens. Uh, we have at the health department um, been committed to learning and participating in research and related to understanding the impact of Gen X and other PFAS chemicals on our health, and we will continue to do that as this project and this program becomes implemented. We're committed to sharing information with citizens and being the health educators in our community to help understand, to help citizens understand and what it means for them and their families. So thank you to uh, the Public Square Commission and our Cumberland County Board of Commissioners for your work um, in helping our communities be safe, um, helping our communities have safe drinking water. And next up to the podium, we will have uh, Dr. Commissioner Tony Stewart. First of all, I should have told the chair to say welcome to Bear Country, <laughs> which is where we are. So welcome everybody and thank you for coming. Um, I want to start off with the scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 20, verse 42 that says, whoever gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones will never lose their reward. And that is indeed what we're doing here. Today marks a significant milestone for our county, and I'm honored to be here as we make this exciting announcement. I live in this area, and I understand the significance that this day is and how meaningful it is um, to the community and to my neighbors. The availability of safe drinking water is an essential need of all of our residents and one that will allow the Grace Creek community to continue to grow and thrive. The part, this partnership with, between Cumberland County and PWC exemplifies what we do to serve those in need when we work together and shows that this kind of collaboration can achieve meaningful outcomes and drive positive change in our communities. As a county commissioner, we're focused on long-term sustainability solutions that will truly set our county up for success in the years and the decades to come. Today's announcement sustained improvements in water quality, fostering a healthier environment for current and future generations. As we move forward from today, we are committed to continuing working together in the spirit of collaboration to move this project forward and keep our residents informed every step of the way. I also want to thank PwC for their partnership in this effort and our legislative delegation for their ongoing support in championing this cause in Raleigh and in Washington. But I also want to thank, most importantly, our residents, those who have been dealing with this contamination for years and who have waited patiently for this day. I know it's been a long time coming. Still got more work to do, but thank you. Thank you to those who have attended our board meetings and stayed involved and kept this issue at the forefront. Thank you for staying engaged, for speaking out. We're here to serve you. And we need you to stay involved, as I'm sure you will, <laughs> um, and continue to move this project forward. Uh, and thank you all. And I also want to say this. I know people think that when you live out here in the rural community that people aren't listening, that the commissioners aren't listening. They think that the only thing that we hear is Fayetteville, Fayetteville, Fayetteville. But I'm here to say, as one who is not a resident of Fayetteville, that we are concerned and we care about our rural community as well, especially great 
indeed Cedar Creek and everywhere east of the river. So thank you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This year has been a significant transformation in county. The Cumberland County Board of Commissioners has had a dynamic vision for the county future, and we have had a tremendous progress along the way. From designing the Crown Event Center to breaking ground on the Homeless Support Center, we have been moving forward with their vision. But no priority is as important as the health and safety of the residents and ensure our residents in our community, especially Grays Creek, has safe drinking water and safe water. Thank you, commissioners, for your leadership and your perseverance in keeping this at the forefront of my efforts to move the county forward. Your advocacy has been instrumental, not only moving this project forward, but move, building momentum for the announcement from the EPA this, this week. I want to also thank the, the, the members of the federal and state legislative delegation who have advocated and provided funding for this cause. Also, lastly, but most importantly, we would like to thank PwC for their partnership and the willingness to achieve the county's goals of permanent, regulated, safe water for the residents of, Grays Creek, of the Grays Creek community. As county manager, it's been a privilege to serve Cumberland County, and I truly believe that we can achieve great things if we all work together. And I believe this is the start of us establishing ourselves in this region as an economic engine for not only this region, but across the state of North Carolina. I'm honored for the, to be here, part, being part of this announcement, and I look forward to the future. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm not quite as tall as uh, the <laughs> last speaker, but I'll bring this mic down just a little bit. But again, thank you. I appreciate everyone coming out on this sunny Friday afternoon. I do want to make sure everyone knows that all power has been restored. <laughs> Amen. We paid our bill. We paid our bill. Paid our bill. <laughs> but unfortunately, someone had an accident that literally took out a large portion of our service territory. And we are blessed to be here, and I'm not so sure if they and their family be today um, differently as they move forward because it is going to be impactful for them. So I just want to make sure that we all, while we're happy that our power is restored, it was not the uh, cause of a rodent or some other thing of that nature. It was definitely something that dealt with a vehicular accident that was very, very challenging, not only for us, but also for that family and those folks involved. But let me get to my remarks regarding this awesome day and the purpose of all of us being here to celebrate this momentous occasion. First, I want to say that PwC has been providing high quality drinking water to the residents of Fayetteville and the Cumberland County area for more than 119 years, almost 100 years wrapped around that. PwC was the very first utility in North Carolina to be recognized with a partnership for safe drinking waters Director's Award for our treatment efforts. We have maintained those standards for 23 consecutive years, and now we can extend that award-winning service to the Grays Creek community. Since forever chemicals were first discovered in Cape Fear River, PwC has been at the forefront of the treatment options and continued advocacy to prevent chemicals like Gen X from being discharged into our source water. That commitment has not changed. We understand our community's desire for swift action to remove contaminants from our drinking water. In the of 2022, our state delegation approached PwC about providing water to the Grays Creek region. Since then, we have been working with the county to, de to determine the best and most feasible way to do just that. We believe that all citizens deserve high quality drinking water, but especially our children. And it's because of that, that is why we're starting right here at Grace Creek Elementary School and the Alderman Road Elementary Schools, and that is why it's so important for us to do that. We're committed to bringing the best and the brightest technical minds at not only PwC, as well as the county, in addition to external resources to make that happen as quickly and cost-effectively 
as possible. But again, thank you all again to our Cumberland County Commissioners for keeping this at the forefront of the community um, as we look to bring this solution forward and providing the staff, quite honestly, the support that to continue to engage looking for the best options. As mentioned before, thank you to the state and federal delegations for all their hard work and their openness, quite honestly, to look at the options that are available and to stay focused on driving um, all the necessary efforts to bring funding back here to Cumberland County and to PwC for that matter to help make this a reality. And lastly, I want to thank my staff at PwC. Our team has been looking at PFOS and contaminants along the Cape Fear River, as I mentioned, for many, many years. This is not anything new to us, but they're leaning in. All hands are on deck as we look forward to working with the Cumberland External Resources to bring this solution here to this community for now and forevermore, um, because we firmly believe that having clean, uh, high quality drinking water, reliable electric service are all of the makings of outstanding infrastructure that continue to, dr to drive this community and this county forward as an economic end again into the future. So again, thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity to be before you. And again, uh, Chairman Adams, if you will want to bring things yes. uh, to a close. Yeah. We're going to have a, a, a Q&A and I'm going to ask uh, the county manager and Mr. Bryant to come up. Uh, you know, it's one thing about the county commissioner, you got to know where your, uh, where your role is. But let me tell you this, this is, and, and uh, it is a good day, it is a great day, but let me tell you that we talk about the collaboration between uh, PwC and the county, but I tell you what, citizens sometimes drive this, and I want to say a thank you out to Mike Waters. Uh, Mike Waters is here. Uh, I'm going to tell you, when, in 2017, when this hit, uh, we weren't really sure what was happening. But I will tell you that Mike Waters went on the Internet. He went to DEQ. He went to Wilmington. He went about everywhere. Uh, I tell you, my, uh, uh, my uh, cell phone carrier was asking about all these emails without getting from this guy named Mike Waters. Uh, but the commissioners, uh, Mike Waters, we want to say thank you for keeping us abreast of that and being able to do that. And all of our citizens that come and talk with us to let us know what they are experiencing and what's happening in this community. I will open it up uh, if you have any questions from anyone. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Ron Ross. I got a question for you. A question, when yes. Are the, when are you going to see, do this complete job? When, when are your running water lines going to be full? When? What's it? And I tell, you, I tell you why I asked that question. Because in 2020, the county commissioner approved $10.5 million for running water lines to be too full. We'll answer that question right here for you. You want to answer that? So with this MOU in place, Nick, we now have literally the handcuffs removed from the county and the PwC teams to start our work. Honestly, that's already begun, but our engineering staffs will be coming together on this coming Wednesday to do all the hard work to plan out the courses of bringing the water to the schools as well as throughout the entire region. So to answer your question, we are doing our due diligence at this point we are not going to tell you today that you're going to get water tomorrow because that would be fool, foolhardy for all of us. Well, can you give me a year date or two? Okay. In 2020, top priority was water lines to be too full. It wasn't in the county center downtown. Once you learn water lines to be too full is before you finish the entertainment center downtown. Sir, can be done? I appreciate your comments. Um, we will endeavor to work hard and steadfast to bring water to this region as we said we would, and we're going to do just that. And I will tell you uh, that the uh, – Wednesday, when the EPA was here, uh, they, out of Atlanta, uh, gave their uh, team to be able to help us move this thing as far and fast as we can. Move a billion dollars from the Biden uh, uh, administration comes to this community and through uh, Governor uh, Cooper, $29 million to the state of North Carolina. So in the position to be able to move this as fast. You gonna have drinking water tomorrow? No. Uh, that's not be we're not going to give a uh, false hope to people, but it has to start somewhere and it starts today. It starts with this MOU. I think you had a question. Sure. Um, and maybe this is for both. Uh, what are those handcuffs you were referring to? Uh, are you talking about logistics? You know, why the delay seven years after knowing four years after um, you didn't have an MOU? You know, what, what, what stalled this process? Well, you know, part of the process is the density the out here in uh, in Grays Creek. And over those years, if you look at our uh, agenda that we've had, we've had more rezoning cases probably for Grays Creek as for anywhere else in the county. 
Uh, when you run these lines, it's also not just about running lines. You know, PwC has to be able to flush them, and you got to have enough uh, water power and enough water customers to be able to do that. All of that played a part into this. Funding paid a part into this. And I think that, uh, where's Commissioner Keith? Commissioner Keith, Commissioner Faircloth, and uh, I think uh, Commissioner Council will tell you that even before we realized that there was PFAS and out the county to talk about running water out to Grays Creek. They actually did a survey, a survey of the of the community. At that point in time, they didn't want water. Uh, part of the problem was whether it was going to be annexed by the city of Fayetteville. There is no annexation, as you know, on, uh, uh, through uh, the legislation. So this gives us an opportunity to be able to partner with PwC to be able to bring that water uh, down here. Uh, the county had already built out the system. We're going to be able to use that. They'll be able to use that uh, to move this thing so much further. So I want you all to realize nobody's been sitting idly by while this has happened. We've been building out a system. Uh, Amanda Barter, uh, who is our utilities, where Amanda at? Uh, we'll tell you we've built out a system uh, that PwC will be able to look at and using their engineers be able to be much farther along now than they would have been five years ago. And thank you, Mont. That's a great question. You know, this PFAS Gen X is for the entire nation, especially for uh, all of North Carolina, from here all the way down to Wilmington. Uh, we're all dealing with those same issues. So, yes, this is the first step. This is where it started. This is where we've already got a water system that we can tie into. But we have not forgotten about the residents of Plantation, uh, Sea Creek, and all of those. It's all the way up to Stedman. So, uh, and I will tell you that after Wednesday, we will probably find out it's in many more places as they've uh, lowered the levels for PFAS and Gen X. So we, we are looking to take care of all of our residents throughout um, Cumberland County. I don't know if either one of you all want to. Yes, ma'am. Well, and uh, I will tell you that if you look at um, uh, where we are, we haven't gotten to that point yet. But let me tell you this. It is our intent that Camorra and DuPont uh, pay for all of this. Uh, and that's why we sued them. And uh, the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners has made it a priority to be as least cost to uh, citizens of this community. We're working through that. And I will tell you, the opera funds that came down through the administration will be used to be able to offset some of that for our citizens. The citizens should not have to bear the brunt of this disaster. And we're going to make sure and try to make sure that it doesn't happen. Is this a water issue or just water? This is just water. We are, that when we build out the system, we will be able to determine that again. That, I think that was kind of her question, and uh, we're trying to uh, that be able to make sure that that doesn't happen. Can you have a ballpark timeline? Are we looking at like a decade or? I told you I'm gonna get in my lane now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, what we're working toward. Thank you for your question, and the question I think was how long. So how long is really going to be de defined about how we move this project forward from a, not only an engineering standpoint, but also as we bring forward that we're getting from the state and federal delegation to allow us to go out and hire the contracting teams and move this project forward. It is no secret that we are in the midst still of a supply chain shortfall. There's not enough contractors in the world with Wednesday's notification of our, of our now new drinking water standard to address all these challenges across not only North Carolina and Cumberland County, but across all the United States. So we're dealing with a challenge. That's why I can't tell you specifically when we're going to get it done because we're managing just like all the other hundreds of water systems that have PFAS in our water to manage through this. And so what we're not going to do, and again, you have this commitment from me. I came on board at PwC not quite eight months ago, and I inherited phase five annexation in Fayetteville. This is not going to be another phase five annexation. You heard it right here. You can quote me on that. It's not going to be. I see my water director <laughs> squinting behind his glasses, but it's not going to turn into another phase five annexation. We're going to go find the money. We're going to continue. And that's why we partnered with the county. Between the county and PwC, we can definitely let them do on their own 
versus whether PwC can do on its own and, lever and, and putting those bills against our current customers. Absolutely not. That is not what we're planning to do. We're going to, again, as Commissioner Adams mentioned, have the polluters to pay for this. And as we work this thing forward and working through the supply chain, we're keeping the time frame and the timeline definitely in mind because we know most of the citizens here have been dealing with this for many, many years. And the last thing they want to hear is, hey, there's the MOU and now it's going to take me forever. Will I live to see this day or, is my, gonna, or my grandkids will be the ones to live with this new reality? And that's something that, again, you have our commitment, all of the folks across this dais, that we're not going to let that happen. Wait a minute. We had one question over here before I get to you. Mr. Ward has had his hand up and I'm going to come back to you. One, I want to thank you guys. Uh, we we do know the 10.5 million, to be fair to you guys, I, I challenge you to move button. forward with that. When you did that 10.5 million, you cut a chunk off that, the MKR, and I watched them do the survey. We, we know that it came out, 10.5 would not cut right, that's right. the water. So <laughs> solutions had to be found. I challenge you to treat them or you did. We know And I'll tell you, uh, and, and those are excellent questions. We're working through those. Um, it is our intent, again, uh, as we do this. One is to build it to urban standards because of, of what we do. That And that's, uh, I think I've got my uh, fire chief here who will tell you that we need to build it to urban standards for the fire department and all of that. So we're, we're building it to urban standards. And as we build this out, you know, we have... When you ask the question of how long this is going to take, understand there are no lines down, so we got to get easements. We've got to do all of that to be able to run these lines. So it's not something that's going to happen today, tomorrow, the next month. But we will tell you that we are committed to keeping those costs low and to running this uh, as fast as we can. Yes. Uh, I may have missed it, but in this first step we're talking about here, how many residents will be served? Approximately 75,000 residents. Let me, let, me ask, let me add one other thing. Um, since uh, Mr. Bryan has started, we've been talking about this since he's been here. We've been meeting on a regular basis. The, um, the only reason why we're not meeting tomorrow, because tomorrow is Saturday, uh, but it's my belief that once we start on Wednesday, we're going to continue. We're going to meet with the state. We're going to meet with our federal um, representatives, and we're going to try to get this moving forward. We don't have a timeline, but we're going to move very quickly and correctly to make sure that we get this settled. We're not going to wait another 10 years to move forward on this. You know, I think what we, what we have learned from all of this is to keep our citizens informed. So as this process goes out, there will be timely informational sessions out to uh, our citizens because they deserve the right to know. Uh, I would tell you I was moved on Wednesday when the young lady stood up and talked, and many of you all were there, and she talked about her family and the ones that were dying of cancer and all of that. You know, that moves all of us, and that's what we're talking about, and that's why Dr. Green talks about it. We're talking about the health of the community uh, and the safety and clean drinking water, and I would I will tell you, uh, Mick Mullen and I have, uh, who is the water uh, guru over at PwC, we talk about it because it's important uh, to understand uh, how the Cape Fear River, the importance of Cape Fear River to us. Uh, and I would be uh, wrong not to even talk about it, but uh, the late Laura Talley, she was well ahead of her time when she talked about the inner water transfer basin that uh, up down I-95, I-40, uh, and I-85 wants to take water out of our Cape Fear River and not put it back in and change it over and put it over into the Noose River. Those are issues that we are going to deal with on an ongoing basis. I know our delegation is well primed on the inner water uh, transfer basin. Uh, we've got to protect the Cape Fear River. Uh, that's our source of water and all of those downstream uh, from us. Well, here, yeah. Here's what uh, we do: is we're not waiting. 
Okay, so let's, then when you write this story that we're not waiting on a lawsuit from Camores, uh, we are actively pursuing a lawsuit against them. But if we wait, you look in West Virginia, you know how long folk waited uh, for the termination of that? After you have that, you got all the appeals. So we've been proactive. And uh, with the uh, money that the $1 billion from the infrastructure that I told you about from the Biden and Harris administration, uh, that $29 million that comes down uh, to the state of North Carolina, those are source funds. We've got some ARFA funds, PWC has some funds, and we're going to all of those to be able to do that. Uh, it is a process, but this Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, and I think PWC, is committed to moving this project forward. We're not waiting on a lawsuit to be able to, to have this happen. Okay, follow-up. So, you said uh, one question, but I'm going to give you another one. <laughs> delay, this is the second part. <laughs> if there's any delay, it won't be because of funding. That's correct. Well, yes, ma'am. Well, again, okay. again. And I want I want a thumbtack into your comment because you said if there's no any delay, it's not going to come because of. Fun You're absolutely right. We have to have the funding, and we talked. And we all up here thanked our delegation, our state and federal delegation, for all the work that they've done, and obviously our Cumberland County Commission for the work that they've done. But this MOU it shows our partnership. It shows that teamwork to move this ball forward, and our commitment to move this ball forward. So as I've, as these gentlemen have heard me say, many of the folks on this dais have heard me say since I've gotten here. Collaboration, collaboration is key. Not only collaboration among us and for our citizens to see that collaboration, but for our state delegation, for our federal delegation, and obviously for our customers to see that we're working together to solve this problem. And when our state and federal delegation see that we're working to solve this problem together, it helps us to put pressure on that state and federal delegation to bring down those funds that Commissioner Adams just talked about. So again, it will be funding, but we, are, we have all hands on deck at PwC, the county, state, and federal delegation to wring our hands of that multiple millions of dollars to close the gap because we have about 40 to $50 million in hand right now between the opera funds and the PwC funds from the General Assembly, but clearly that's not going to be enough, and we're going to keep working day in and day out until we get there. So thank you. Yes, ma'am, you have one. Yeah, quick question. Um, just uh, kind of going along with the news as well that we're getting about the um, uh, granulated activated carbon filter coming in. Um, that's going to be, you know, good for getting a lot, rid of a lot of PFAS rice. So I'm just wondering um, with these new put any sort of added stress on being able to filter out these chemicals? Do you anticipate any challenges just being able to deal with that aspect of it? Thank you for your question. And quite honestly, PwC, we began our work more than two years ago to analyze what was the best technology to remove PFOS and PFOS from our water. And yes, we have um, identified granular activated carbon to be that solution to address PFOS and PFOS in our water well before this opportunity here in Grace Creek um, was brought to us. So yes, the granular activated carbon system that will be functional in about 2028 well before the um, new drinking water standard is now will be applicable to us, it's going to be in service to remove PFOS and PFOS from our water. So, uh, as you run out to these 75,000 residents and also the businesses, when you run a line past the property, are they going to be required to connect, or is that going to be their option? It would be the resident's option to connect, but we would strongly suggest that they do uh, based on the the work that we're going to be doing and the water that we will be providing. And, and as you asked that question, it is an option, but hopefully if, if we have the funds to be able to do that through that lawsuit, we can have them connect without any cost to them. And then that makes sense to be able to do that. But I will tell you, there are some people who want their wells and they're going to keep their wells and, and, and they have every right to do that. We can't force them not to have their wells. Cost, or would you wait until after the lawsuit's done and then, okay, if you'd like to connect, now we've got some cash. One of the, one of the, I mean, I say fortunate but unfortunate things is since we're a Tier 1 county and we are considered a distressed utility, we can use some of our funding to help people, help residents connect and pay for that. So we would provide that option for one to connect, uh, pay the connection fee or tap fee so they wouldn't have to bear, uh, bear that cost. What's the 
Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, right now, our estimates are approximately, and I've got to keep saying approximately, mm -hmm. because while PWC's engineers have done their estimates, we've yet to get the counties completely engaged until next week. But right now, we're looking at at least a $100 million project just for this phase one. Mm -hmm. And when I say this phase one, this is to the schools and this immediate surrounding area. As we know, building out the distribution system to encompass the entire Grays Creek Water and Sewer District is going to require far, far more than that. So that's why I keep reminding folks that finding the funding, getting our delegation engaged and keeping them engaged because they're already engaged, but keeping them engaged as well as our community helps to allow us to bring those funds back here to move the ball forward. Because again, we can't allow funding to be the challenge for getting this work done. And, and, and I, I will tell you that uh, from PWC standpoint, from your question, that's for this area. We still have to deal with Cedar Creek. We have to deal with other areas in this county. So you can see how those funds are going to mount. Is this like the next step or the first step for doing countywide water? There is a, a, a you see, you, you, you go ahead of us. Um, there are con uh, uh, conversations about countywide water. Um, it, as you know, years and years ago, all of our neighboring counties, uh, as the uh, federal government was coming down and giving those funds for federal water, um, some of our leadership in those old days turned it down. So, so you know, one of the things that, uh, and I see uh, Robert Van Gien's here, the one thing that I would tell you is to go back and do structure after things are doing it up front. And so that's why we're talking about cost and all things and building out this system, and it's not going to be as easy. If we had done it years ago, you wouldn't have had all of uh, the houses, and you could have gone in and do it uh, easily. But when you're talking about going past people's houses and going past uh, schools and stuff, it, it, it is a monumental task. Uh, but I know the PwC is up to the task because they've done it before, and they know how to do it. So uh, just one more question, because I know everybody has to be somewhere. I do have a day job. I know he addressed, uh, you know, are you going to wait for the, the county lawsuit to get settled? That's not no. the only way to hold uh, right. Kenworth or DuPont accountable. There's about 35, 3,600 uh, suing as well owners as individual plaintiffs, and that is one of the recoverable portions they're trying to get in the lawsuits too. So, you know, that's why yeah. we urge as, as a community so again, thank you all. Uh, again, we talked about Wednesday being a good day. This is on Friday, a great day. A great day for the citizens of Grace Creek. Great day for all the citizens of Cumberland County. Uh, and uh, again, we tell our citizens, Cumberland County, one of our priorities is to take care of our citizens, and we will continue to do that. Thank you all so very much. It's hard up here. It's hard up here. It is. It's, 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 oh. <laughs>